Hello my friends and welcome to the SP deck challenge deck overviews part 20 of this series. So I believe we have four left before I'm done with overviewing the decks for these SP deck challenges. So woohoo for that. Um, but first, before I begin with the SP deck challenges, I'd like to s say the um, intro as well as go over some news. So, um... <clears throat> Please like, share, and subscribe, and see me ring that notification bell, um, and s dinging the bell in either selecting um, personalized to be notified of the videos like the most, all if you want to be notified of all my pretty much um, master videos for now, or none if you just subscribe to me to be helpful, which is uh, certainly appreciative as well. Um, anyway, um, for the news. Looks, I think I already went over the WCS 2023 finals. I think I went over all of these. Yeah. Okay, looks like there's actually no news. I wasn't sure. Um, but yeah, of course I have missions. I'll get to those later. What I will do is get to the next SP deck challenge. Dex. The last one I went over Crystal Beast um, with Elemental Heroes as I think my deck and then I forget what my opponent's deck was. I, I think this was the deck before. Oh wait, okay. So my opponent was playing Sacred Beast then. So this is the one. And yeah, I do have four left. So that's cool. So this is going to be the... The fourth to last one. Pretty nice. Um, yeah. And so, let's look at Evil Heroes, which my opponent's playing. But first, we'll look uh, at my deck, which is uh, Volcanics and Fossils. And unfortunately, you can't really um, do... Unfortunately, Fossils is one of those annoying decks. We can't really play the deck without using the UR Fossil Fusion. So that kind of stinks. Because all of the the, fo the Fossil monsters, all, all of the fusions, they have to be special summoned with Fossil Fusion. So you can't even, like, um, use Polymerization. Which was a little bit annoying when I was trying to make a deck that was kind of based off of this deck. But, I mean, a workaround could be you could just, like, um, use some of these fossil dragons that have good when they're sent to graveyard effects. Um, and then just use them with, like, Dogmatica Punishment since that's only a rare. And then you can at least make some use out of the ones that, like, allow you to, like, destroy something when they're sent to graveyard. Because at least those ones are, I believe, rares. Hold on. Which ones are they? Oh, Skull Knights are uh, super rare. At least this one's a uh, uh, common though, a uh, normal. So that's nice. Yeah, I do. I I did happen to own one of these though, so that was pretty cool. Um, I forget how you would even get these. Anyway, th these might be available in the Legacy Pack, but I can't remember. Um, anyway, let's go through the deck. So the deck's called Friendship and Bravery, and the deck description means a deck that combines Volcanic and Fossil. Volcanic excels at inflicting effect damage and destroying opponent's cards, whereas Fossil f um, can fusion summon monsters with high attack by using monsters in the graveyard's fusion materials. Combine the strengths of each to defeat powerful enemies. Yeah, you could potentially combine these with quite a few different archetypes. Because, like, while the first one has to be a rock, the second one can be pretty much whatever you want. Um, some of these do have to be... Yeah, specifically rock monsters in your graveyard. But I... Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. A few of these do have to be specifically monsters from the opponent's graveyard. I thought so. 
Yeah, like this one as well. Um, but yeah, they're fairly generic. Like, the rock monster may, like, you may have to, like, play a few rocks, but then you can pretty much combine it with anything. You could even make these so that you're, you're not, you're not really playing the fossils, but rather you're just playing a different really good rock act attribute or rock, rock type deck like Adam Anspiders. And you could probably like make use of these as well if you happen to be able to get into them. Because these don't ha um, specify that they have to be using fossil monsters specifically. So that's cool. Um, so that's the nice thing about the fossil deck. Um, yeah, and then Volcanic Shell is the first card that showcased. Pretty nice for helping you to get more materials into your hand. Um, yeah, yeah, pretty nice. Like, helps get more monsters into your hand and potentially eventually get them into the graveyard. Um, scatter shot. Um, basically gets more of itself into the graveyard, so it not only stocks your graveyard, but it also helps to give you a Rageki for your opponent. Which combines really nicely for Blaze Accelerator, since now you can banish this card during your opponent's main phase to get a uh, Rageki during the opponent's turn to really disrupt them. Not bad. It's kind of like a, a one-sided, um... That one card that whenever something summons you blow up the whole f um, field of monsters. Except this is only for monsters your opponent controls. So it's one, uh, one side torrential tribute. So yeah. And you don't have to like, um, like you don't have to necessarily do it during a summon. Um, volcanic counter. This is probably one of the not as good ones. But at least it can save you from, or at least it allows you to burn your opponent for a little bit when you take battle damage. Um. However, you do have you do have to banish it the first time you take battle damage. So unfortunately, if you banish it while there's no other fire monster, you, I mean you ba you lost a counter, but you didn't really burn your pawn for anything so most of the time that's gonna be a, a downside um flint krieger yeah um you just you need to specify so it gets this effect but when you do you get to um mill a extra deck fossil monster which again it's very helpful for the ones that have graveyard effects either for adding you a specific card or for um, destroying something on your opponent's field. Unfortunately, the ones that destroy stuff on the opponent's field have to do it during your turn. So yeah. And then also, um, you can you it has a little bit of burn as well, while also being able to cycle uh, uh, something that mentions fossil fusion or is that card oh wait now you return to your graveyard but they do have great but I think quite a few of them do have graveyard effects yeah like this one has graveyard effect so returning to the grave them to the graveyard is still not bad it's still good it's you'll still be able to get um, use out of them if they're just being sent to the graveyard um yeah, and you're banishing them a lot of the times off their own effect anyway, so it'll be easy to have them be, um, banished. Um, Volcanic Rocket allows you to either add the original Blaze Accelerator, maybe this one. Or, I mean, probably the best option most of the time is probably going to be this one. Since instead of having to send a specific monster, I mean this one, I don't know if you, I don't think you have any pyros that aren't volcanic, so like that's not really going to get in the way too much. So it's probably best to just add this one. Because also you can activate without needing the original on the, like needing to attribute the original on the field first. 
Um, yeah, and since, like, the only pyros are also gonna just be the volcanics, yeah, it really doesn't matter. Just, like, add this, and then you'll basically get... I mean, you won't be able to destroy stuff, but, I mean, drawing cards, like, is still pretty useful. I think a lot of the time, drawing cards is gonna be pretty useful, like, especially since you, unlike the other ones, you also get to use this during your opponent's main phase. So you can get two draws a turn cycle, which is pretty nice. I mean, as long as you have enough volcanics, you can keep getting draws each turn. I mean, sure, it's only one draw, since it's a hard once per turn, but still, like, that, it adds up. Um, and then Weathering Soldier. Yeah, this one also searches for the fossil cards. Um, it can also search for monsters as well, since a lot of them call for fossil fusion stuff. Um, yeah. And then you also get, and then it, like, loses attack, because, again, they can't have a 2,000 attack normal summon. That actually has an effect, at least. But, I mean, it's useful, since it's easier for it to be destroyed, so, it's so at least there's that, like, it pay off. Um, Volcanic Queen, yeah, this is basically a worse kaiju. Since, not only does it, I mean, I say worse because you can't normal summon a set, like, I mean, it's not even as good as Lava Golem since you only get to, like, attribute off one. Um... I mean, I guess they still end up taking damage, but I don't know, like, since it's not until the end phase, they're probably going to end up just doing something with this card before it even reaches end phase, so they have to worry about taking damage. So a lot of the times, they probably won't even end up taking damage. And... I mean, like, if they have a card that they want to be in the graveyard, they can just send to the graveyard. You just gave them an outlet to be able to send cards to the graveyard if for some reason they wanted that outlet. Um, and then Volcanic Doomfire. Um, it's pretty cool since it allows you to get multiple attacks with this card. But, unfortunately... Oh, wait, no. Oh, no, 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 it, it just makes, forces all the, um, so for Lynx, it's gonna force all them to attack, but for the other cards, maybe they can, like, circumvent it, if they can, um, a little bit. It does also kill everything, so it's not, it's not a bad effect, it's pretty nice. Um, Fossil Fusion, yeah, like, this is how you go into the fusions, you don't have any other way. I mean, I already tried... There's no way. Since they have to be special summoned with Fossil Fusion, you can't circumvent it. I don't think there's any cards that can get a that can get around um special summoning fusions while ignoring the summoning conditions or something. I don't know. I, 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 I think or maybe there's not a lot. Like maybe Waking the Dragon can circumvent this. But I think even Waking the Dragon, like, um, they have to be able to be summoned properly. I mean, they... Because of this text, I don't think even Waking the Dragons can summon these. So yeah, I don't know, like, an easy way to do it without the Fossil Fusion. So yeah, Fossil Fusion is definitely going to be your best friend if you're playing with the Fossils. If you actually want to go into them, that is. Um... But at least it can be searched. So technically, if you only have the one, maybe you can make do with just one. Since it can be searched by quite a bit of stuff. It also put, it, it, it also can return itself from the hand to the graveyard. So there's also that. So yeah, maybe it, it's okay if you only want to run one for a little bit of time. Until you get like another one. It might not be that bad. Um, But yeah, unfortunately I didn't even have one, so... That stinks. Oh well. Um, and then this one just allows you to um, special summon another fossil fusion guy from your X deck um, that has a bigger level, basically. Um, see this. 
See, man, this was like if if there was even just one fossil fusion guy that could be like um that could be summoned without the fossil fusion card, like then I could like at least go into some others using my one copy of time stream that I actually own. But unfortunately, I couldn't go into any of them, so time stream basically becomes useless. Um yeah, but it also allows you to recur fossil fusion monsters, but you can't even incur ones that you like um cheat into the graveyard. So yeah, it, it basically becomes useless if you can't bring out a fossil fusion to begin with. Um, and then miracle restore is pretty nice. It allows you to draw a card. So at least this kind of, well, no, wait, hold on. No, I mean, no, I. Yeah, it allows you to draw a card when Fossil Fusion is in the graveyard, but at least if you don't don't have Fossil Fusion and you still want to run this card for whatever reason, um, you can at least get some use with the sending a rock monster from your deck to the graveyard effect. Though, in that case, might as well just play Foolish Burial, probably. You probably don't need, like, the extra copies anyway. Maybe like if you want like an extra, a few extra copies of Foolish Prayer, you could play these, since it will still allow you to send a rock. Could be useful for Adamant's prayers maybe. Um, Blaze Accelerator, yeah, I already talked about that. I kind of talked about this. Yeah, like these allow you to destroy and inf maybe burn with, with the other one. But, I mean, I think you still might as well. You probably don't even need to run these with the Blaze Accelerator to reload. Although, maybe sometimes it is nice to get a Destruction instead. So, but I don't know if you really need... I mean, I, I guess you could just play all three. I guess it's still probably fine. I think in most cases, this is probably going to be the best out of the three. Oh, uh, yeah. Out of the three. Um, and then Wildfire... Allows you to destroy all your Blaze Accelerator cards, which is your spells and traps, because you don't have any Blaze Accelerator monsters. Uh, for tokens, but generally I don't think you really want to do that. I mean, it does help you to be able to get the reload into the graveyard, but if you want to get the in into the graveyard, you might as well play that one card that allows you to pitch it to draw two. Um, yeah, I would say. Because this only su summons one token. Which, I mean, I suppose is nice. It allows you to go into link plays and stuff. But, like, generally, like, drawing more is, like, a bigger impact. Um, Blazing Mirror Force. Um... Yeah, like, this actually goes pretty nice in a burn deck like this. Since you are burning your opponent a little bit, like, maybe you could actually end games with Blazing Mirror Force. Um, if you can eventually get them low enough. So I don't think Blazing Mirror Force is actually that bad in a deck like this. I mean, its main focus may not to be to, like, burn your opponent to death. But at least it's doing a little bit of burning, so Blazing Mirror Force could maybe get him for the win. Um, and then Blaze Accelerate Reload. Yeah, I kind of already talked about that. Drawing, sending. If you send the Scatter Shot, you get to Raigeki during your opponent's turn. If you send this, then during your turn, you'll be able to, like, get yourself another Volcanic Shell. If you send the Counter, while well, there's another Fire Monster in the Graveyard. Which, unfortunately, are fossil monsters are not fires. But, I mean, you probably will end up having other fires. You'll be able to inflict m even more damage. Um, and then, as for the fusions, yeah, this one allows you... Yeah, they all have some pretty useful graveyard effects. Either, like, getting you more card advantage, getting you more cards in your hand that... Are going to either help you get to the bigger monsters like this adds you time stream which um, can help you 
go from a smaller fossil monster to a bigger one. Um, so yeah, they either get you, like get you help help keep your game plan running smoothly, or they help you to destroy stuff on the opponent's field. Yeah, and they also have useful on-field effects too. Like this one is multi-attack. This one is piercing, while also being able to add fossil fusion when you banish it. And they also banish themselves as well, which is, like, still useful for the Flint Krieger. Um, Skull Buggy allows you to add, add monsters, while on field allowing you to inflict 600 damage, which, I mean, again, that's more burn. So cool, kind of cool. Another piercing one, another... Another piercer, but at least this time. Actually, they're about the same stats. This one has a little bit more. Um, this one is the uh, um, Monster Destroyer, which is nice. Um, and then Skull Wagon. This is the back row remover, while also... So a lot of these kind of share effects, but this one deals a little bit extra burn. Um, but yeah, it's still on destruction when you destroy something by battle. Uh, well, actually, it kind of shares the effects of being a multi-attacker while still having that burn. Which is honestly kind of nice because now, like, you will you could, um, inflict up to 1600 damage, um, onto the opponent. Unfortunately, it's giving up a little bit of attack for that burn. Hmm. But if you can still manage to get rid of two, like, you can maybe be getting in for a little bit more damage than what this could be getting in for. Especially if you, like, destroy two defense position monsters. Um, and then this one, another multi-attacker. There's quite a few multi-attackers. While also allowing you to special summon monsters from your opponent's graveyard to your field. So this is probably one of the nicer ones. Because it allows you to disrupt your opponent's graveyard while giving you f more field advantage. Um, and the discard works kind of well for the volcanics that want to be in the graveyard. Um, and then Skull Geos. Um, this is a kind of a fun effect. Switching... Um, Switching attack and offense of the opponent's monster that bows and you get to choose it if you want to or not So if it's more beneficial to not switch it, you don't have to and also another piercer So it ha so like um, depending on what stats were before maybe you could even switch it so you could get them for more damage So that's cool And also it inflicts um double bow damage so it, ooh, so that works really nicely for its piercing and switch, um, switching attack and offense around. Wow, that's just a nice set of abilities that it has. And then its graveyard effect it doesn't have one, but it isn't a really nice um, field effect, so that makes up for that doesn't have a graveyard effect. This one doesn't either, so it seems like the level 8s don't have graveyard effects. Yeah, this one doesn't either. Um, and then this one can just take a lot of attack off, um, which could make it easier for the, um, fusions that like, like th this guy to deal even more damage or the ones that want to destroy stuff at battle so they can burn, like, it makes them more likely to be able to, like, actually destroy those monsters. Um, but you might want to destroy monsters with this thing first. It does inflict a thousand, so it de so basically, I mean, so it is more than what this one inflict. So it basically depends on like what's more beneficial to you. Is if it's more beneficial to you for you to inflict a thousand per destruction, or maybe like it'd be more beneficial to get in with a uh, piercer. But they only lose attack equal to original defense. But, I mean, 
that's still fine because like if if it's in the fence and it and it loses that attack this can still just switch it so that means all the attack and it, it lost suddenly now it doesn't have um uh, it applies to its defense instead so that's cool i think that would be how it works anyway So there's the first deck, and then my opponent's playing Evil Heroes, and the Evil Hero deck they're playing is called Darkness of the Supreme King. Yep, rip, terraforming. That is banned now. Okay, anyway, um, the deck description reads, the deck based around Evil Hero monsters, fusion summoning requires dark fusion and dark calling. But if the effect of Supreme King's Castle is applied, it is also possible to fusion summon evil hero monster using su super polymerization. Unleash the full power of these powerful fusion monsters. Um, an interesting fact, it was kind of difficult back in the day to get a hold of a few of these evil hero support cards. Because a few of them were like surprisingly expensive because they only had one printing. But I think nowadays, they should be fairly budget. Yeah, like, literally the only w reason, really, they were expensive. I mean, I guess they were pretty good on top of it. But it was mostly because they only had one printing. Which even, which does show you that, like, even for, like, lesser popular decks, um, it could still be worth knowing that a single printing may help to keep its price high. Or maybe it goes up in the future because of a single printing. Or maybe it's already high and you didn't know, realize that. Um, I think it was Dark Calling that was expensive. And I think it, and I think maybe Malicious Pain as well was the other expensive one. Oh wait, no, it's uh, Dusted Gold and Dark Calling. I think were the two expensive ones. But I think nowadays, like. Like, they got another reprint, so they're fine now. Um, anyway. Um, once again, they can't make you forget about the, um, Elemental Heroes, about the original Elemental Heroes. Four original guys. So, of course, they have to include them here. Um. I mean, a few of the evil heroes do call for them, so... It is appropriate still. <laughs> funny, this calls for a rock. I don't know, maybe not that funny, but still. After I was looking at a lot of rocks. Um, anyway, um, yeah. So that's their biggest purpose for the evil heels. I actually call for them. Um, and then Infernal Prodigy. Draw, not bad. But what are you tributing something for? You do have... Do you have a few monsters you tribute something for? So maybe you'll be able to get the draw. Unfortunately, it doesn't work if you tribute it for... Oh, wait, no. Um, fusions don't have you tributing the fusion materials anyway. But I'm just saying, like, if you're, like, um, ritual summoning with this card, unfortunately, you just won't get the draw then since it has to be for a tribute summon. It has to be sp specifically for the tribute summon of a hero. So I'm not sure how much you're going to want to pull that off. At least, at, I mean, you do get to special summon it. So, like, if you did have the play right then, then you would go for it, probably, to get that draw. But otherwise, I mean, later in the game, you probably won't want to... I mean, unless your fill got wiped, that would be another way you could, like, um justify it. Um... And then my element to the hero, Wild Heart, is uh, simply unaffected by traps. That goes for yours and your opponent, so it's not bad. Unfortunately, sometimes that's a drawback because um, a trap that could boost it won't work on it. And also, you can't um, summon it from the graveyard with Call of the Haunted, I believe. I'm almost positive you can't. 
um, since it's just always unaffected by traps. I believe that goes for the graveyard as well. Um, and then Inferno Gainer allows you to give one of the other fiends an extra attack. You could give... Well, no, you can't. Well, I mean, technically, if you had another Inferno Gainer, you could give your other Inferno Gainer extra attack. If you wanted to. But it's better to save it for your higher attack monsters. Or maybe, like, if one had a cool effect when it destroys something. Um, you could, like, give give an extra attack to that one. So it's it becomes even more beneficial. Since all your evil heroes are going to be fiends. Um, yeah, and then this one allows you to add a fusion. So this one allows you to add one of the fusion spells, at least. The dark fusion, so not bad. Oh, it does allow you to add either one of these. So that's cool. So it allows you to add both of your fusion. Well, except for the super polymerization. That's cool. Like, two out of three is still pretty good. Um, that was a dusted goal. Um, can't attack unless you control a fusion. It's a little bit better than the Element Hero counterpart of this card. Um, the one that searches you, the Skyscraper. Because at least it doesn't destroy itself if you don't control a fusion. It just simply can't attack. But you can still like put it on the board if you need like a 2100 beat stick so that your opponent has a little bit of a hard time getting through to you. Um, to your life points. Um, this one allows you to special summon a heal, evil hero from the deck, so that's pretty good. Use it for us, um, as fusion material so you can actually get into the graveyard and then you can use its effects, so that's pretty nice. Uh, can act as extension that way. Um, and then Malicious Edge. Allows you to tribute with one tribute if your opponent controls a monster. So that's so, yeah. So infernal. So even though it's level seven, infernal prodigy alone can still bring this out because of that effect. And it's a piercer. So, so there you go. Like maybe a pretty good one to target with the infernal gainer since um. Since it also has fairly high attack. Um, Foolish Burial. You do have a few graveyard effects. So probably going to want to send Sinister Necrom. So you can that get that effect. This one has to be banished itself from the field though. So, But yeah, Inferno, Sinister Necrom probably going to be the one you want to do. Since it can be like best summon things in the deck. Um, terraforming gets you the field spell, which the field spell is Supreme King's Castle. Um, so I guess that ba this is basically how you can um, go into pretty much anything with the super polymerization. Because otherwise you wouldn't be able to. At least for the fusions that call specifically call for dark fusion so that's cool um also it allows you to um mill evil heroes from your deck or x deck to give extra attack and maybe get um monsters that you want to be in the graveyard for the graveyard facts into the graveyard like this one hmm also level five isn't bad that's like a thousand extra attack or twelve yeah a thousand extra attack um and maybe a few of these fusions have gave you effects I'm not sure but you do have extras so you could certainly spare one of them if you want to give a little bit more attack um and then dark fusion dark calling these are pretty much all both the ways of fusion summoning this one's kind of more like the miracle fusion where you can like ban stuff that's 
from your graveyard, but it also allows you to use stuff from your hand as well. So, like, if you use Dark Fusion first, like, you could just use Dark Calling afterwards by using the ones you put into the graveyard at that point. Um, Evil Mine. Um, pretty good effects, like, based on the number of monsters. And it's, it's pretty good against, like, Volcanics or Fossil Fusion, since I'm probably going to be putting quite a few monsters into my graveyard. Just, um... Like, without my pony even, like, destroying them. So, like, this is pr actually a pretty good deck against against that fossil volcanic deck. Because I'm probably generally going to have, like, quite a bit of monsters by the time maybe my opponent, like, draws into this. Yeah, they're probably just going to want to wait, at least for the 4+. plus, Because then, then they can search for stuff. Because, like, drawing a card, like, I mean, that's kind of cool, but, like, searching for stuff is generally much better than drawing a random card. Um, Vicious Claw gives a monster extra attack, and also can spell summon tokens, so it gives them more field advantage, while also, like, burning me a little bit. But I don't think they're caring as much about the burn, but it's still, like, a little bit of a bonus. Um, Super Poly. It's really useful with Supreme King's Castle because this way they can like go into more stuff and maybe like be able to like use a wider array of my monsters to go into stuff with. Um, and then Evil Blast. Of course, I'm going to be special summoning stuff to my field, so this is gonna work. And maybe they can even spell summon something to my field. So maybe if they can, like, they can, like, trigger this on their own. But, I mean, it's probably going to be easy enough to trigger anyway. So it's a little bit more burn. Not much besides that. It does give my monsters 500 more attack, though. What? So it gives... M my monsters extra attack at the cost of like burning me I just feel like that's kinda not worth it unless I'm misreading the card um this is another piercer yeah like this is nice it pierces and inflicts damage so another one that's good to give extra attacks to this one just like destroys stuff with its ability this one inflicts damage with its ability but it has to like basically go around like um the table twice before they can even use that burn effect once so it is kind of slow and it has to be an offense in order to be able to do that also it can protect itself a little bit but i can just destroy them with one of my monsters too if i really want to get rid of that um, Dark Gaia. It gains extra attack. So, the higher, um, attack of materials I use for this guy, the higher attack he becomes. Um, and also it can, like, um, change stuff to attack. So I guess it is, it's kind of useful to give it extra attacks. Since, like, that that way the second attack it goes for will be guaranteed damage. Since it's, like, putting them into attack position. Um, and then Wild Cyclone. Um, it kind of has that Ancient Gear style effect where I can activate spells of traps while it's attacking. And also destroys all set ones. So. Probably it's going to want to attack into something that I can actually inflict damage to me with. It has to basically attack into attack. But since I can't activate anything in response. It's more likely to actually be able to destroy all of them. So that's not bad. It's first effect kind of plays into its second effect pretty nicely. And then evil heal malicious fiend. Hmm. This, th this like um, 
ma makes it so that um, anything that I'm trying to have in defense, they have to go into attack. But I could just choose to go straight to my end phase. So this could either make it so that I'm forced to skip my battle phase or just know that when I go into my battle phase, even if I have defense position monsters, that's not really going to help much because they'll still just go into attack anyway. Hmm. That's kind of interesting. Um, Malicious Bane can be a Bageki. Um, I mean, maybe not for everything, but for a lot of stuff. Because, like, I mean, 3,000 attack, like, that's probably going to get rid of most stuff. And it also has, like, gives itself more attack. And, I mean, this can also help give it more attack. So, if needed to be able to wipe out the board, maybe. But, like, it kind of needs to attack first in order for this to come into play. I mean, it's probably it's gonna probably be like wiping out pretty much my whole board most of the time anyway. I uh, or I, I, it, if 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 not, like it could just like attack into one of my smaller monsters so that like it can gain extra attack either off of its ability. Oh wait, no, either I mean, so it can gain attack off of the Spring King's castle, and then maybe it can destroy everything at that point. Since I think it keeps the attack. Yeah, it's until the end of the turn. So yeah, it'll be able to still do that. Um, though. Though if you are planning like after the battle phase to use its wipe effect. Make sure that. Oh wait, no. For the rest of this turn. So it'll be fine. Just like attacking with everything you want. And then. Um. And then maybe, like, you can destroy everything afterwards. Okay, so that's cool. So those are the two decks right there. I hope everyone enjoyed. Um, I will be going into a pack opening now. It'll just be a legacy pack opening. I think there's still some cool stuff. Actually, no. I think I'm going to do another ten packs for the pack that has the synchronize or that has the because I only have two days left on this and I kind of want to get a few more assault synchrons so I think I'm going to try to get another one see if I can get another one here so I, so so this will be my pack opening for today 10 more packs of the synchronized cosmos or Maybe I can do the legacy pack as well. I don't know. I'm just going to skip. Ooh, I got another Assault Synchron. That's, there we go. Actually, that, yeah, that's pretty nice. Yeah, that is pretty nice. Okay, so on top of other cards I... Okay, I gotta play Sand and Shory Beast. That's not too big of a deal. Because I probably only need to have one anyway. Um, beat, I already had um, a play set of. This I uh, play set of. So a lot of these I already had a play set of. But I'll cycle through these. Um, Nature Beast, pretty useful. I mean, if you can bring it out, it just like negates pretty much every spell. Once, once it's on the field, I mean, and it's a you can, so you don't have to negate your spells unless for some reason you want to. Yeah, and of course, assault synchron can just best summon itself. And the cool thing is, it can best summon itself even if you control a monster. And the, but the downside is that you can only go into synchro, so it's not useful for other decks, but it's very useful if you only plan to go into synchros anyway. If you can like take that restriction. Tilting entrainment. I mean they kind of need that restriction. Otherwise sprites would just eat this up. It would be way too good. If um, if it didn't have that synchro restriction. Tilting. But that is I think one of the reasons why it's not that high. 
for the TCG. Like, it's still a little high, but, like, not really, like, that high. Plunder Patrol ship lease, a pretty good card for Plunder Patrol. B, really good card for fur hire since it gets you a search of another fur hire monster. Um, Satellite Synchron, good for Synchron decks. The Bitch Dragon Sword Soul, it's a good one up for um, Sword Soul decks. On your market set duel. Searching Synchrons, that's nice. Goatee Chain, useful for Goatee. Troya, Lightning Warrior. Um, Stardust Chronicle, Spark Dragon. Circle the, a few Circle the Fairies. I mean, it's a generic Synchro, so at least it's that. Um, but, I mean, it's... Well, like, you really only want to use this for Insects or Plants. Yeah. Need to your mantis, red beard, black eyes. Sheaf, camellia, vex. This is actually pretty useful for fur highs. I, yeah, since it searches for the for the spell and traps. My Minuruka. Miracle Synchro Fusion, Goldie Cosmos. Probably worth it to at least play one of these since it is searchable. I think it's searchable. Um, why do I monosaurus? At least, I mean, if you play two, you can always search for it with the trap trick. I mean, it's searchable. I mean, a lot, like pretty much every spell and trap, I think, is searchable by. Um, <clears throat> by Heavenly Dragon. Like Lord of the Heavenly Prison. Um, Natroy Antra, Natroy Pineapple. Or is that only normal traps? I'm not. I th is that only normal traps and spells? I'm not sure. Um, Natroy Marin, Sonic Warrior, Atlantean Attack Squad, Junk Charger, White Moray, Helma, Pyrath, Electric Jellyfish, Infernal Queen, Different Dimension Deep Sea Trench. You might be able to use this in Goaties. Lemoria. Limit Overdrive. Plunder Patrol. Um, Natroya Blessing. Sea South Attack. It's useful for a higher level water decks. It's pretty useful for that water control deck. Plunder Patrol Booty. Prior the Plunder Patrol Party. Goatee Fury, and that's it. So, what am I missing now? Let's see. Yeah, I'm still missing a few cards. I still haven't gotten any of the Mole Cricket. But, I mean, at least I got two of these. Maybe I'll open just one more pack of ten because I also still didn't get three of these. But I'll, 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 I'll do that off camera but I, I'll still let you know if I do um, get the third assault sync gun or if I get like another copy of spellbound anyway um, um, I hope you enjoyed this pack opening um, thank you all who saved for that I hope you enjoyed the deck overview thank you all who saved for the deck overviews and um, if you would like to um, check again on the thank yous I'll have them in the description as well as the verse and I'll have the um, the verse discussion and pin comment anyway that'll be it for today's video again um, please like share and subscribe and ring the bell for um, either personalized all my videos or none of my videos um, simply subscribing can be enough, but if you want to go farther and leave comments or, um, <clears throat> or like leave, or like view my videos, um, go a little bit farther to help me out, feel free. But I don't want anyone to feel forced to do things they don't want to do.